What up and welcome into First Strike, the UFC 306 edition. And that uh, we're fired up for this big battle. Co-main event, main event, going to be a ton of fun tonight. We're going to talk to you guys about our three early looks to cook the books. Spots you're going to want to get into before fight night comes out because these numbers are only going to get wider. Fired up to talk about the card with the Apex Predators of the Octagon in MMA, Jeff and Subhuman Gaucho. Sub, how are we feeling? Good, man. I'm looking forward to this uh, to this card. It's going to be interesting to see what the broadcast is like inside this uh, this arena, this sphere. And uh, coming off a really fun Dana White Contender Series, shout out to your huge win. It was something to behold. I was there. So was Jeff. Jeff, how are you tonight? I'm fantastic. Sup? Long time no see. Mike, yes. as always. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about this card. Uh, surprise, there's only 10 fights going on, but I'm excited to see what Dana White and the crew does here in the sphere. Uh, we've got some uh, great combat weekend. We've got LFA on Friday, and we've got Bellator kicking off at noon on Saturday. we got college football, as always, on Saturday. Great weekend of sports. Great weekend of combat sports. Excited about this one. You mentioned the sphere, and interesting little side note. I heard the other day, it's a $2 million average production for the UFC to bop around the country or around the world and wherever they're going out there in production costs. And this one, they forked over $20 million. So it should be interesting to see. I think a lot of it goes into that production value. A lot of people say they might not be able to pull it off at the Spear, but it's going to be a celebration of Mexican independence. And uh, we got a great fight card lined up. But speaking of a great fight card, We've got a first for first strike. All three breakdowns involving the main event. We're not shying away from the heavy hitters tonight. Jeff's going to kick us off. He's going to talk about a little battle between the number 50 and 51 lightweight contenders out there, Jeff. The floor is yours. How are we getting paid? Let us know. I got to say, this uh, this one here happens, to, in my opinion, might be fight of the night. Uh, I am so looking forward to this. These guys are evenly matched for the most part. Um, Re Rebovic, he's, he's a, uh, hits extremely hard. He's shown the ability to take a lot of shots. He's got a pretty strong chin on him. Um, he doesn't have great stand-up defense, though. He does eat a lot of shots, but that's because of his aggressive nature. He tends to come out there with uh, great cardio. He likes to force the pressure. Uh, he seems like he gets taken down fairly easily, but he always seems to pop right back up, which speaks to his, uh, his great cardio. Um, he might have his hands full here with uh, Zell Huber, on the other hand. He's got the massive eight-inch reach advantage. Uh, he's shown the ability for great takedowns. And uh, once he gets you down there, he's going to throw some submission attempts. He's going to throw some ground and pound. I don't necessarily see that happening here with Rebovix having a pretty, so uh, pretty solid chin. Neither guy has been finished um, in their pro careers. You know, uh, Zell Huber, he's, he lost his first UFC fight against Tra uh, Trey Ogden. He, he lost by unanimous decision. I think the nerves got the best of him there. He looked like absolute garbage. Um, I don't hold that against him. He came back out in uh, one, three, or four in a row after that. Uh, I see Rebovix coming out here fairly aggressive early, trying to close the distance. Again, with that eight-inch reach advantage for Zell Huber, I think he's going to need to do that. Um, he's going to try to crush it on the inside like he normally does with some uh, solid shots. But uh, I think that's going to happen for this first half, maybe three-quarters of the first round. And then uh, Zell Huber is going to find his range. You're going to see some solid jabs, some crisp combos. You're going to see uh, Rebovic backing up against the fence, which is going to take some power away from uh, from his shots. Zell Huber is going to uh, keep him in range, I think, for most of the fight. And uh, I don't know. I'm going to go here. Give me the Mexican with the pride on the line. I'm going to roll Zell Huber by the points, by decision, at plus 135. Yeah, I like your thinking there, Jeff. Um, I do think Zell Huber, five points, has a lot of a lot of the win equity there, um, quite frankly. I think it's a good price. Excited to see how that one shakes out. And uh, speaking of fights, I'm excited to see how it shakes out, man. I, I like these uh, these matchups on some of this card. This is one I'm, I'm interested in. And uh, we got Odie, the Jamaican sensation Osborne, going up against a Mexican here. My guy, Lazy Boy Rodriguez. What are you putting your money on in this one, Mike? You know, you talk about the matchups, and there are a bunch of fun ones on the card. This one fits us against a striker and grappler, 
right? And you see it kind of, if you look at the numbers and you look at some of the, the information, you'll see that we almost got, we almost got uh, gator arms in lazy boy out there because he definitely has an eight inch reach disadvantage to Ode, the Jamaican sensation. You know, we were talking a little bit about this one before we started filming and this is one that I certainly, I want the spot to win, but I want this guy to win because I don't like the cockiness I've seen in the pre-fight information from Ode Osborne. You know, we look at a couple of things out there and yeah, he's a great striker. You know, he's certainly got to go out there. He, he's capable of with his arms, keeping you at range. And if he finds his distance, like Jeff mentioned in the last fight, could be trouble. But here's the thing. Pump your brakes. You're a cocky dude, and you're one in three in your last four. You had a questionable split decision win against Charles Johnson, or you'd be 0 and 4. On the other side of things, we're looking at a spot, and we see, you know, the uh, Rodriguez camp, you know, excited to be there. They're kind of taking that humble warrior approach that I like about it. Uh, but I love the comments that uh, Rodriguez made in the post or the pre-fight interviews. And he said, I hope this guy doesn't think we're friends. Trying to rip his head off. His belief system is we don't train in gyms with your neighbors. I'm sure I didn't say that right, but you know what that means out there. And uh, this one to me, you know, we see Osborne. Cocky is an mf -er because he's out there saying, hey, I'm playing the UFC game. He lost to Jerome Rivera. I KO'd him in 26 seconds, but in all fairness, uh, that Rivera spot for Rodriguez went the distance. And um, I'm not willing to play that ladder game in terms of UFC competition. Now, these guys did spar just three weeks ago. They're keeping it close to their vest. They're not trying to let you know what took place in that thing. No tipping of the hand. They're trying to keep it professional. To me, I feel like this cockiness is just an over-dramatization of the fact that maybe it didn't go so well when they jabbed out there at extreme. You know, the thing about Osborne does have the experience. He fought the McGregor fight or on the card with the McGregor fight. He fought at Madison Square Garden. But I think when he comes down to it, we've got a guy that is a young up-and-comer. He loves to fight. He spends a ton of time in the regional scene, and he's getting another opportunity to go represent Mexico. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. The way that I'm looking at this fight, though, for me, I'm going to the double chance because I think with that reach disadvantage, look, at, there's no way he's knocking him out. Hopefully he does. But – I don't see that being the case. Where I'm looking at this thing, I think what has to happen is the striker has to get taken to the ground. Osborne's going to have a tough time getting back up. Either we see lay and pray or a submission opportunity from Rodriguez. Opens up the double chance for me. Either he wins by submission or he wins by decision. And it's a price at plus 140. So going to be a great spot. I think there's great value in that opportunity. And uh, looking forward to seeing how that fight takes place. I like the look. That's excellent look for some plus money on that one. Uh, which brings us to the co-main event, a five-round fight. Alexa Grasso, number one ranked, versus Valentina Shevchenko, number two ranked. I got to say, these fights are going to be pretty exciting. Sub, what are, you, uh, what are you thinking on this one? Yeah, this is a fight I'm looking forward to. There's a handful that I'm really looking forward to, but this one in particular, I'm looking forward to how this one shakes out. You know, This is a trilogy fight so far. Alex Grasso got the better of the first one. We saw a draw in the second. A little bit of controversy there. And, you know, it's it's interesting. I can make the case for Val. Val is a Hall of Famer. There's no doubt about it. She has a long and history career, but it is a long career, and she's getting a little long in the tooth. She's 36 years old now. In their first fight, she dominated the minutes, won the first three rounds before she got caught, in something really of her own doing, getting a little cocky with the with the spinning techniques and whatnot. The second fight was a little different. It was far closer. Uh, Shevchenko still won more minutes, but Grasso had big moments in that fight. Val was a little bit fortunate that she wasn't stopped in round two. She got hurt pretty bad, knocked down pretty bad, and that's kind of saying something. You know, this is a woman that has 50 minutes in the cage with Amanda Nunes and never got knocked down. And now, down a weight class, she is getting knocked down. And in a competitive fight like that, I think we're seeing the trend here. You know, I think this time around, Valentina is going to win some minutes. She will get on top. But on top, she's not awful effective. She's not landing a whole lot of damage. She'll probably find herself in guard or in half guard, doing a little bit of laying prey because when she does pass, when she tries to advance, get to a mount, and so on, 
she's found herself in bad spots. It happened again in round five of the last fight when she got her back taken and very nearly finished in that fifth round. So she's got to try to play this safe. And I don't think Alexa Grasso is going to let her do that. You know, I think Alexa is on the way up. She's in her physical prime and she knows she can hurt her on the feet. She knows when she gets into scrambles on the ground, she can take the back and cinch something up. But in this one, I think it goes over. I think Alexa wins. I think she wins three rounds convincingly in this point. And there's probably a couple big moments, a back take, a knockdown, et cetera. I think this is her time. Uh, Vale, as I said, she's going to the Hall of Fame, but this flyweight division is on the rise. Bantamweight has become a little weak. And I think after Saturday night, you're going to find that Valentina Shevchenko is a bantamweight and Alexa Grasso is going to retain here. Oh, excellent. Look, love taking action on the co-main. Always a lot of fun. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun to get after it this weekend. You guys know the deal. The full crew will assemble to go after it. We're going to start 30 minutes before the fight gets takes place. We're going to go through each of the fights on the card itself. Talk to you guys about how we expect them to go down, how the action is going to come to fruition, how we're trying to get paid on each of those fights. And you're not going to want to miss it. Sports Money rocking and rolling. Make sure you go out there. Follow us at Sports Money Wins. At Sports Money Wins is the new X page. We're pushing the content out there from Sports Money. Subscribe to the channel, and we're listener-supported. Become a member. Low cost, high return. We're giving members all kinds of special perks and exclusives, and that means a ton that you guys believe in what we're doing. Looking forward to getting that cash from Subhuman Gaucho, from MMA Jeff. Shout out to you guys. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Get that. Thank <laughs> you.